What's going on guys? Uh, so a while back I put a video up on the channel on how to troubleshoot a lawnmower ignition switch or to test an ignition switch using a digital multimeter. Uh, and when I made the video, I really didn't show the meter at all. Uh, I really just showed the switch and maybe the meter leads uh, as I ran through the troubleshooting process. Uh, and I've since gotten a number of questions on what settings, you know, was I using on my meter? How do I, you set a meter up? You know, will this type of meter work? And so on and so forth. Uh, and I even recently got a question on how do I use a meter that maybe doesn't have an audible continuity buzzer or alarm. Uh, and I figured I'd just go over just a real quick, you know, meters 101 on using one to check continuity uh, and hopefully try to clarify some things that maybe didn't come across so well in the video. Uh, now I do have a number of different digital multimeters here. Uh, they're all very similar with some slight differences. Uh, I figured I'd just run over a few of those with you as well. Uh, but before we get into that, I do just want to start with probably the most basic meter that I have, which is this older Sperry DigiSnap. Uh, it's just a clamp meter. Uh, it's got two inputs for meter leads uh, and really just a few basic functions. Uh, now, some of these functions have a number of different ranges, uh, but it really just is a singular function uh, from checking AC amperage, AC volts, DC volts, resistance designated by this ohm sign or omega symbol uh, and then you have a continuity or diode check uh, and then your off switch or non-contact voltage setting uh, which for the record uh, i don't put a whole lot of stock in non-contact voltage testers they're called widow sticks for a reason uh, especially the one on this meter i've really never had it work very well for me at all uh, you know, you're supposed to be able to set it to NCV and press this button. Uh, it always goes off almost without fail. Uh, it's very inconsistent. So uh, just a real quick aside on that. Uh, just be wary of that uh, if you've got one on your meter. Uh, you know, test it, but don't necessarily rely on it. Uh, now, with that being said, uh, let's go to our first setting here. Uh, that's going to be a diode or continuity check. Uh, as you can see, the display immediately lights up to OL, which stands for open line. Uh, and that basically just means that our leads are not touching or that they do not have any continuity. Uh, now, if we touch our leads together, we see the number of values change and approach zero. And we also hear an audible buzzer. You can also see this light light up and the audio icon light up on the display. Uh, and that's basically your continuity check. So if we carry this over to a basic house switch, you know, if we turn it on, that opens the circuit between these terminal screws. We remain at open line or open circuit. If we switch on, we see the value change once again. We light up, we hear the buzzer, and we see close to zero ohms or resistance uh, which is a good thing and once again turning it off opens it back up uh, now we can do the same thing on the resistance or ohm reading setting uh, if we go to either of these two ranges uh, it's basically the same idea not touching or open is open line if we turn the switch on and achieve continuity We'll see the values change and approach zero or 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ohms, which is close enough. Uh, and we do see that we have continuity. And similarly, if we just test it by touching our leads together, we get essentially the same values and the same thing happens. So again, we'll check our terminals. Opening the switch, goes back to open line. Uh, same thing, it just doesn't have the line, it doesn't have the buzzer, uh, but it achieves the same effect. And pretty much any digital multimeter, or analog meter for that matter, should have a resistance setting that will basically achieve the same thing. Uh, now if you are using an analog meter, uh, obviously it's not gonna have the digital display, but rather a needle that goes back and forth. 
Uh, if you just want to see how it responds to continuity, plug your leads in, touch them together. You should see the meter pegged towards zero. And when you open the line back up, it'll go to either probably an affinity symbol or an open line symbol or something like that. Uh, same idea. Uh, it's just a little bit, you know, more straightforward on a digital meter. Uh, now that's an example on this particular meter. Uh, you could see kind of those two different settings kind of make up your, you know, three different continuity options, diode check, continuity, or resistance. Uh, if we go to a meter like this, uh, they're all on a singular setting, diode, continuity, or resistance. So if we go there, again, same thing, open line when not touching. We approach zero when we are touching. Open line, zero. Same thing with the switch. Open line when it's off, zero when it's on. Uh, now if we hit our select key, we go to diode check, same thing. Zero with continuity, open line without. Hit it again, we have the audio icon. So we do have an audible buzzer for continuity from open line to approaching zero. And once again on our switch, we have continuity. So uh, that's a brief example on that. You know, it's kind of the same functions, the same features, just set up a little bit differently on a slightly different multimeter. Uh, and same thing with this. Uh, this is another pretty decent meter for the money. Uh, just a real compact clamp meter made by Unity. It's the UT210E. Uh, similarly, we have four different functions kind of packed into one setting. If we move our selector here, we can check either capacitance, continuity, diodes, or resistance. And again, we have to select the feature we want using the select key. Right now we're set to resistance. This is set to audible continuity. You see the icon light up. Diode check or capacitance check. You can see the NF, that stands for nanofarads, uh, and that is allowing us to check capacitance on that same setting. And hitting it again, we go back to resistance. Uh, so similar features, slightly differently set up. Let's see, I like to keep these small snips in there. And lastly, I'll show you one more meter. Uh, this is the Klein CL800. And it looks like I left it on. Uh, but same thing, one setting has three different features here. Uh, resistance, continuity, or diode check. And again, you have to hit the select key to cycle through which one you want. So diode, ohms, or audible continuity resistance or ohms without audible response or feedback uh, and back to diode again so depending on what meter you have uh, you know do check if it has this symbol that means it has a continuity test or an audible continuity feature you may have to individually select it you know once you click to that setting you know hit whatever select button you have and find that icon on your screen Again, most meters are set up pretty similar in that way. Uh, now, if you have an analog meter, it may have an audible buzzer or a switch, you know, that you can turn the buzzer or beeper on or off. Uh, but, again, in the same way, you can just watch the needle if it moves. Uh, that typically means you have some continuity. Uh, whether it's good continuity, you know, that's a whole other subject. That's a whole other video. Uh, but that is just a real quick and easy way of using any meter to check if you have, you know, a closed circuit or continuity between, you know, two parts or features. So uh, hopefully that gives you guys a little bit more clarification. Uh, if you guys have any other questions or I didn't explain something clearly enough, uh, leave me some comments below. I'll make another video. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of add this one on. 
uh, to give you guys a little better understanding of how and what I was looking for in that last video. So I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the next one.